In our last video, we started with our daily sales on a chart and we had events that took place during different periods and we wanted to calculate and see what's the impact of these events on our daily sales. Then we went ahead and managed to highlight these individual events on our chart and we also calculated average daily sales on different events and the percentage of impact on overall average sales. If you haven't watched that video, I have given it in my description. In today's video, we'll go ahead and enhance our, the value of our report by adding a moving average on top of our daily sales and provide flexibility to adjust the moving days using a parameter. Additionally, I'll also show you how to create measures to display KPI on the tooltip. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so to stay up to date with Power BI, Power Query and Excel videos from Excel Fort. We'll start with building a moving average on top of our daily sales. First, let's look at what is a moving average. A moving average is a calculation used to analyze data points by creating a series of averages over different subset of our full data, right? The reason for calculating the moving average of our daily sales here is to smooth out data over a specified number of days. It could be 7 days, 14 days, whatever. It can reduce the impact of random fluctuations, ups and downs, and show you a clear trend over a period of time. To calculate the moving average, we need to build a measure. So let me go ahead and create a new measure. I can call this new measure as moving average. I'm going to calculate the moving average for past seven days. So let me store those days as a variable. I need to change the filter context to calculate the average daily sales. In this case, I need to get the past seven days date range and store it in a variable first. For this I can use multiple functions but in this case uh, I would like to go for dates in period which will essentially give me a table of dates. Dates in period. The first parameter is dates date and uh, the start date would be the current visible date from the dates table. So on the chart so max date number of intervals I'm going to go back seven days use my variable and I want days we are talking about days so it will be a day let me return I'm going to change the filter context of our already calculated measure which is average daily sales in this time I'm going to calculate for past seven days and average it hit enter now let me go ahead and add the measure to our chart. You can add it in the line chart. Now you can see the moving average is showing 7 days average. The spikes over here are smoothened out. And now it gives you a clear indication of how the trend has been, right? I spot a small problem here. At the end of the chart you can see I'll make it 2021 on my year filter so you can clearly see that the trend line continues even after the last business day here right so that's how uh, the dates in period behaves to fix that let me go back to the measure the moving average measure and I just need to stop the calculation after the last business date for that let me first get the last business date into a variable last sales date I'll call it which will be calculate of max sales order date remove filters from all so I need to put a condition here I can also assign this calculation to a variable name it results
return if max dates is less than or equal last sales date then show the moving average otherwise it will be blank now you see the continuation stops after the last business date when building moving averages you also have to look at another issue at the beginning of your time period right so let me go ahead and change the filter to all currently you are looking at seven days average let me go ahead and change it to 30 days for example right a longer period than seven if you notice at the beginning of uh, our time period which is 2020 the moving average doesn't look okay right that's because it starts calculating the moving average from day one even though there are no 30 days it starts calculating so uh, we need to modify the calculation so that it will only start from the 30 day onwards so let me go ahead and show you what exactly happens here i can change this chart to a uh, table currently you see the total sales and the moving average let me go ahead and in the moving average i want to show the number of days over here right i can mark this as i can comment this line now we have this dates in period which basically returns a table i want to count the number of rows in that number of days and say count rows which will count the number of rows in that date range now you see you have day one two three all the way up to we have 30 day moving average so it becomes 30 over here then start 30 from that point onwards because 30 taking 30 days right so i don't want to average it for anything less than 30 days so let me go back to my measure so i can put a condition over here let me remove the comment Let's say if count rows period greater than or equal my days then calculate my moving average let me go back and check now our moving average should start from day 30 exactly i can go ahead and switch my chart yeah now you can see the moving average start from day 30. it would be a nice idea for you to provide a parameter for your users to choose the number of days they need to see the moving average right for this we'll go and create a parameter under the modeling tab you can click on new parameter let me name it day range it's whole number minimum three days and maximum 90 and default would be seven days it has automatically added a slicer for you to choose let me go and place it right over here i can apply the same formatting by using the format painter so this has values from 3 to 90 so you can slide left and right now it has also created measure that picks the value that is selected right fine now we need to incorporate this value into our measure let's go ahead and click on moving average instead of 30 now i can replace it with the day range value now this is changing based on the value you are changing on the range over here The last thing we are going to do to enhance this report further is to add a nice tooltip. If you hover your mouse over these values, you just see the sales amount. But if you want to give your users more information like what's the event that was going on, right? This is blue, so there is an event. So you need to provide the event details and what is the average sales in that event period and whether it is compared to the market or the whole period is it up or down right we have already calculated it over here you can see so we need to replicate similar information on the tooltip and provide it as a kpi 
let's go and create a measure and build it step by step right new measure I can call this measure as event tooltip first let me get the date current date that is visible max dates date and I need the description from, from the events for that I need to go through the event table and pass this current date and find out if any event exists for this particular date so I can call it events this variable let's use concatenate x she'll concatenate the expression for each line of the events table so I'm going to check if the current date is in the event start date between event start date and the end date then I want to return the event name that is event description right so if there are multiple events I need to use a delimiter I want to push it to the next lines I can use unicar 10 I can return this variable let's go ahead and build the other parts once we test this I have an error here so let me clear this last comma I don't need any more arguments this should work to show the tooltip um, I need to drag and drop the tooltip measure to the tooltip section let me go ahead and check yes I see promotion 1 and 2 that is related to this particular period right nothing over here then this is COVID lockdown 2 and 1 over here to provide a better view of what was going on I can also add the average daily sales for this particular event and the percentage with the KPI symbol let's go and modify the measure for that not only the description I also want to add the at the sales right the average daily sales so I can store it in a variable let's call it average sales which 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 will be our average daily sales and uh, I need change percentage let's call it change percentage return this so I'm going to concatenate description and I can add this measure value over here average sales and we also need to provide the percentage and the indicator In that case I can add so if the change is greater than or equal to zero then you can press on the windows key on your keyboard and press the period get green otherwise you can get red and at the end I can add the change percentage So which will be within format change percentage so I can provide the string for percentage that's it it should give me what I expect right click enter now let's hover our mouse and check if we get the percentage and the amount yes so there are two promotions over here so I get both the value right 
but there is a problem i don't get the amount right it's the same amount 33000 can be because we had two promotions 49 and 56000 so let's go ahead and check tooltip description average daily sales this is not the average daily sales i want the event sales average daily event sales I remove the moving average uh, let me put it back now let me go ahead and check if I'm getting the right results this is correct both are positive in these events let me go back to see a red just nice little red good I'll go and do some formatting to my tooltip on the tooltip I can go and change the text label to that's white value could be yellow and the background i'll choose transparent bring it up to 15. yeah it looks good now okay and also i can turn on the zoom slider on this if you want to zoom in on the chart yeah great now it provides you an option to zoom in on any part of the chart yes with this this comes to a conclusion in the part two of the second video of this series hope you all enjoyed and learned some DAX and some neat techniques if you have any doubts or comments please leave it below i'll get back to you thank you very much see you in my next video